I are just heading out for lunch and we're taking Bertie with us. Found a dog friendly cafe and then we're gonna go to a dog park and play fetch with him. Oh, my little puppet. We've had the carpets cleaned this morning so they like hoover up all of the dirt and then shampoo everything at the end. It's all nice and clean now. Nice and clean for you to go make a mess of again. <laughs> so cute. Oh, so many friends. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story, and I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. body image couple of days normally we go out for like breakfast or lunch every single weekend and it doesn't bother me at all I order straight from the menu just eat it and have no thoughts and no guilt but I don't know why today a little bit different I'm literally just thinking to myself like no Meg you don't do that shit anymore I love being able to go out for lunch and have the same as other people and order straight from the menu so it's a slippery slope if I start acting on these thoughts when I get them so it just yeah just because I get the thoughts doesn't mean I need to act on them to meet a few friends for dinner again tonight two, two nights in a row like this is me well at social quota <laughs> still not having the best body image day but it happens you don't feel great about yourself every day and also like i've worn a tight dress six months and proud that's my little baby oh i just felt the baby kick see that is much more important than my body image there's beyonce beyonce Hello darling. And like my friends are coming out to have dinner with me, you know, not like my outfit or my hair or my makeup. Probably really not that important to most people. Like they're probably not registering it to the extent that I'm sat around going like, oh, oh, this bit, that bit, oh, oh. Like I'm certainly not gonna go in judging them on their weight or how they're looking or anything like that. Like, no, I just wanna see them. So I guess I don't need to have like higher expectations for myself. <laughs> excited <laughs> oh. so Brendan's just gone off to football I'm about to have breakfast going to have a bagel Brendan doesn't often have breakfast before he plays but different bodies different paths my body doesn't manage its weight based on what he's eating or doing and I do have some eating disorder thoughts this morning like I really don't get them all that often now, but yeah, it's really, my head's annoying me. I don't know if it's because I've been out a couple of times this weekend for like dinners and lunch. I'm still not feeling great body-wise. So it's giving me thoughts of like, oh, well in that case, you should miss some calories out of your breakfast. Like that would be the sensible thing to do. If you're feeling like you don't like your body, do something about it. Ugh. So I'm literally saying to myself like opposite actions, don't look for that kind of like quick fix through food or body control. Like, no Meg, you don't do that shit anymore.
<laughs> Look where Stevie's managed to hide. Ah! <laughs> I'm just gonna distract myself now, like not sit around and dwell on feeling a bit shit or whatever. So I'm gonna fix the sofa back together. We have to put throws all along the back of the sofa to stop the cats like scratching at it. My tastes have changed so much in recovery. Like, I still really like carrot cake, but I used to like love the icing the most. I wanted it like really, really sweet. If I could have just had a cake just of icing, I would have eaten it. And also every time I finished one slice, I felt like I wanted like eight more slices. And now I could not eat another eight slices of that. Genuinely, if someone gave me another slice of carrot cake now, even if they said there's no calories in that, I wouldn't be able to eat it. And that's because like I'm healthy, I've had it loads, I've not restricted it. My body knows what it tastes like, it's like familiar with it now, it's kind of lost its novelty a bit. So I think that fear of like you're gonna eat and eat and never ever stop, like it doesn't happen. You do get to a point where you're like, hmm, okay, it's just food, it's just carrot cake. But only if you're having it, like you're not gonna get to that point if your body's not having it. And yeah, for me, like sweet stuff, I used to just want sweet stuff all the time. And now, like, Anyway, I'm at my car now. I uh, got a couple of toys for the dog. They're actually cat toys, but we've bought these for the cats before and they didn't play with them and the dog loves them. So I recorded the start of this video a couple of weeks ago and I was just having such a bad weekend body image wise. And now I feel so much better, even though I'm actually bigger now because I'm more pregnant and I've gained weight generally. So like it just goes to show it's not really your body. Like one day you can feel fine, the next day you can feel really, really fat and then you can feel fine. Like your body's not changed over the 24, it's more than 24 hour, whatever period. <laughs> My psychologist tells me like it's not real it's not something i need to act on and she also tells me like it's been triggered by something like if i'm feeling fat it's because something's happened and she tries to teach me to like address the trigger rather than act on the thoughts so she says about three triggers which are physical emotional and heightened body awareness so physical would be like if you feel bloated full hot tired hungover and so to address that if you're feeling bloated wear some comfy clothes like maybe lie down put like a heat pack on you just wait for it to pass as well like bloating passes you don't need to act on it and restrict because you're feeling fat and the second trigger is emotional triggers so like if you're anxious or sad stressed hormonal it's okay to feel those things you can tolerate feeling like that you don't need to look for a quick fix with your body and that's also not the message that those emotions are sending to you like if you're feeling a bit sad or lonely maybe you need to speak to someone get a hug from a friend have a cry not stand and stare in the mirror scrutinize your body feel shit restrict your food like those things are unrelated and they become really confused with eating disorders but yeah part of recovery i think is untangling that and like addressing the actual emotions that you're experiencing and not just getting consumed in body and weight like say you're stressed or pissed off because you got a parking ticket you don't then need to go and miss some food to make up for that. I think of that like if you had a leak in your kitchen and you went and painted your bedroom wall to try and fix the leak, like the two things are so unrelated and the body is almost like a superficial gloss over of what's really happening, like something you know you can control, you know you can focus on. So you pour your energy into that and you're like, as long as I've got this okay, everything will be fine. But like, that's not really what went wrong in the first place. Like, yeah, address the actual emotional trigger. And then the third one's massive for me is heightened body awareness. So anything that draws attention 
to your weight and your body. If you gain weight, if you grow out of an item of clothing, if you see a photo or you catch a reflection of yourself, you see yourself in a mirror, if someone makes a comment about your weight, even if someone comments on their own weight, that can like set your thoughts going about weight. Maybe if someone else is on a diet or they tell you like what they've eaten that day or what they haven't eaten that day. You know, like when it's like four o'clock in the afternoon and someone goes, oh, I've only had an apple today. And you're like, ugh, what? <laughs> And that then draws attention to what you've eaten that day and you're then like, oh, well, have I eaten too much then? So I just see my psychologist every two weeks now, but I saw her after I'd been feeling this horrible weekend of fatness. And she helped like take me through what are all the triggers, blah, 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 which I should have done on my own. I think mine was partly like emotional. I was quite anxious around some stuff around the baby and the birth and I kind of like needed to set some boundaries around it, which I wasn't doing. And so then I was like, not feeling in control of my life and then I don't know turning it onto my body but since then I guess I've like addressed that trigger a bit more like more directly and actually like set some boundaries and then also heightened body awareness like I'd been for dinner with a friend who'd made a couple of comments like really innocently about my bump and like talking about weight loss after pregnancy which loads of people talk about all the time like I can't be wrapped in cotton wool, I'm gonna hear people talking about this shit. But she was also saying about what she'd eaten that day so far, which was fuck all, I'd had more than that in the like two hours before dinner. <laughs> I think all of these things just like triggered my head and then made me turn it all on my body and I thought that was the problem rather than like real shit that's actually happening in my life. I thought I needed to go and paint the bedroom walls rather than just fix the leak in the kitchen. My psychologist tells me I need to like restructure my thoughts and not just get lost in them and think, oh, this is fact then. So for example, like if my friends only eat in an acai bowl or whatever it is that day, it's like, good for you, you do you. Different bodies, different paths, like that is not an option for me. I'm pregnant, I can't be eating like that. And even if I wasn't pregnant, I wouldn't be eating like that because that's fucking daft. And my body needs more food than that. I've got a history of a restrictive eating disorder. I can't afford to be dabbling in restriction. So it doesn't matter what somebody else is doing. Like that is not an option for me. And I struggled with the concept in recovery because I was like, but I am gaining weight. My body is changing. I don't like the changes. So I was like, it is real. It's not a thought. And like, how do I address that if that's the trigger? But that's where the restructure comes in. Like I needed to gain weight. I was under my body's healthy weight and if I stayed weight suppressed I'd have lived with an eating disorder for the rest of my life. I'd have thought about food all the time, I'd have been lonely and isolated, rigid and routined and boring, cold, tired, anxious, irritable. I don't want that life and that is the life that comes with a weight suppressed body. So even if I didn't like love the body it didn't matter I can accept the body for the size it needs to be for me to live the life I want to live and be the person I want to be and I think that is how I would like restructure that kind of thought but i am not perfect at recovery like i pretty much forgot about all of this stuff when i was feeling this terrible a couple of weeks ago like i couldn't snap myself out of it and she did really really help me so i just wanted to share it in case it might help somebody else leave your body be it's just doing what it needs to do <laughs> okay lots of love